God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Marie. I'm the pastor of the church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our service today. We have a good message for you today. It is titled, Prioritize Your Life. And in parentheses, I put, Good for the most important things. Our scripture today, which is our main scripture, will be from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 33, which reads as follows from the Good News Bible. Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires of you, and he will provide you with all these other things. He will give you all the things that you need. Just concern yourself with the things of the kingdom of God. My beloved, let me ask you a question. What are you most concerned with at this present time? Your soul or the present things of this life? I pray that this message prompts your mind to think about your future here in this life and in the life to come. I will open up today with Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30, which reads from the Good News Bible, It is God who clothes the wild grass, grass that is here today and gone tomorrow, burned up in the oven. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you? What little faith you have. My beloved, this important verse properly implies the putting on of a complete dress. This dress that surrounds the body on all sides and beautifully expresses that eternal membrane, which, like the skin in the human body, at once adorns the tender fabric of the vegetable and guards it from the injuries of the weather. My beloved, as humans, we are concerned about what we wear. And what we wear has a direct impression on what we think about ourselves. Now, one other point is our skin. The way we take care of our skin, how we protect our skin, says about what we feel about our own bodies also. Do you uh, use lotions on your skin? Do you take care of your skin? When you go out in the sun, do you cover yourself so you don't get dark spots or are not subject to cancer and different things? Do you protect your face? Do you wear a hat when you're working out in the garden or mowing the grass so it'll protect you? We have to not really put our outer looks or outer features on subject to the world, but who we are inside of our hearts. And we are not to worry about if we're going to have clothes to wear next week. You may not be on the earth next week. Why worry about something you have no control over? Jesus is relating to this, that God takes care of everything. Then when their lifespan is up, they're gone. The flowers, they have to die. You get seeds because the flowers die. And you get the seeds and you replant the seeds. You buy seeds to, to start off flowers, to start off plants in a box. We do that in school. And you put them in the sun. You keep them nourished. You keep them watered. And then you see, you know, the pod, the seed opens up and the flower starts to come. One little leaf starts to come up. That's the way it is with our growth in Christ. We grow a little bit at a time. We nourish ourselves with the Word of God one day at a time, one scripture at a time. You just don't get saved and then you know the whole Bible. The amount of years I've been saved, I don't know the whole Bible. I'm always finding things in the Bible that I haven't read before or the Spirit hasn't opened my spirit to. That's what always, I'm always searching the scriptures to find out what God's will is for me. Find out what God is saying to me that I may feed the flock of Jesus Christ. So when we dress, we need to dress in Christ. We need to spiritually dress so people can see who we are in Jesus Christ. They can see that we have this glow about us because of him that lives within us. Then we can show kindness. Our spirit will bear witness with other people's spirits. That we are the sons of God. Yesterday we went into this restaurant. I'll just give you a quick testimony. And we walked up to order our food. And there's a fellow there. And instantly our spirits bared witness with another in the restaurant. But you know what he was doing? Giving out tracts. Gospel tracts. So we got to talk for a while. But nevertheless, we kept the tracts and we're going to pass them on. Because we have tracts too. But that shows that there are people dedicated to promoting the gospel. We promote the gospel by radio. By internet. God chooses different people to promote his word by different means. Okay? We all don't go out and do the same thing. 
Well, we were on the mission field for years. Now we're not on the mission field. We work with the mission field from here. And this is our mission field, our local area, our local church. So know that God will take care of us if we put our faith and trust in him first. Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 says, So do not start worrying. Where will my food come from? Or my drink? Or my clothes? That's the Good News Bible. Don't worry about down the road because you have no control of what's going to happen down the road. You have no control about what's going to happen with the economy. You have no control about whether it's going to storm or not, whether a hurricane's going to come, whether you're going to have an earthquake. It's out of your hands. You have no control as to what is going to happen in another part of the world. Take care of yourself first. Take care of your household. Take care of your family. Take care of the work of the kingdom and leave the rest to God because you have no control over anything. When you come to Christ as a Christian, you give him full control of your life. Well, give it to him. Don't keep on taking it back. Give it to him. He has broader shoulders than you have to to handle it. You're weak. You're feeble. But God isn't. God is all-knowing, all-powerful. He is in every place at all times. Not you. You are limited to time and space. But God isn't. So my beloved, don't worry about anything because you have no control over the situation. You can't change tomorrow's time. You can't change this 24 hours in a day. If you trust God every day, you want to follow his plan, he has your day mapped out for you. You want to go off the track, then there's consequences to going off the track. If the Spirit says don't go and you go, you can suffer the consequences. If he says go and you don't go, you suffer the consequences. <laughs> Let God, through his Holy Spirit, lead you and guide you. Matthew 6 and 32 reads, These are the things the pagans are always concerned about. Your Father in heaven knows that you need all these things. God knows. You look at people that aren't saved. They're running here and there, to and fro, trying to do this, trying to do that. Be here, be there, doing this, doing that. Trying to accomplish all these things. When God knows what. Oh, I have to work 24 hours today because I got to do that. I got to buy this. Work 24 hours a day? When are you going to sleep? You're going to drop dead of a heart attack. You're going to fall asleep on a job. You know, I know of people that have worked Many hours over time, they were driving home, they work a double shift, they were driving home at night, fell asleep, they left this world quick. What did they accomplish? Nothing. They left what they thought they would gain to somebody else. And they're gone. And they cannot provide for the family anymore, for anybody's livelihood anymore. Just preachers that go here and there, here and there, always flying here and there and there, that one day, hey, the preacher didn't show up. Oh, he had a heart attack, he died. He's trying to do too many things. He's trying to outdo the plan of God. A lot of preachers die young. A lot of preachers die of cancer because they don't take care of themselves. And a lot of people that were always traveling on jobs. They had repair jobs. Repair, they might be in Iowa one day and then go down and go to Philadelphia another day or getting on a plane or driving. Next thing you know, you read in the obituary, they died of a massive coronary. Beloved, God wants you to trust in him and he shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. If people don't trust in God through Jesus Christ, they will always be living in fear of tomorrow, which is not guaranteed to them. That's how I'm going to sum up that verse. Okay? Don't be like the pagans. You know Christ as your Savior and Lord? God will take care of you. He says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You can't take care of the world. You can't take care of everybody. There's never going to be peace in the world. You can't stop every war. The United States can't stop every war. Our president can't stop every war because there's humans in the world. Jesus said there will never be peace until I come back. There will never be peace until the Prince of Peace returns. Because as long as there is a devil. You know, it's seemingly amusing at times when you look at the book of Revelation and it says that Satan is chained up for a thousand years. And everything is okay, right? For a thousand years. Then he's got loose for a while, and everybody gets back into the groove. Then Jesus comes back. See what I'm saying? I mean, people, and you know why that is? Because of the flesh. If the flesh isn't controlled, which means if the flesh doesn't trust Jesus Christ, it's always going to seek other means to have their needs met. The flesh yields to sin. The flesh loves sin. We look at our bodies. What tastes the best? Food. Greasy chicken, ice cream, sugar, sweets, 
Don't that always taste the best? You go on a diet, you're dying. You're not dying because you're eating good food. You're dying because you have this appetite for all these things that aren't good for you. Did you notice that? You want to diet, you're going to pass buffets all along the highway. You're going to pass bakeries. You're going to sweets, pastry shops, ice cream shops. That's what you're going to pass, right? And your body says, man, I can taste it. I can taste it in my mouth. I can taste it. I have to have it. That's the way we are. Sin sells, right? Sin looks good. Our body wants to sin. That's why we have to control it. Our mind likes to think about the good things that in the past. We have to control what we allow to come into our mind. It's going to come, but we have to dismiss it. And different things tempt your mind. Photos, music, things like that. They bring you back to nostalgia, right? To years ago. If you meditate on all that, which was before you got saved, which was sinfulness, you'll get wrapped up in that again. That's why you have to let the things that aren't of God go and meditate on the things of God which are good. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 10 reads, If you love money, you will never be satisfied. If you live long to be rich, you will never get what you want. It's useless. You will never be satisfied with what you have. If you have a million dollars, you want two or three million. It's just the way life is. It's what you crave. You can crave more and more. Look at these ruthless rulers. Some of them start out good. Even in the Bible, the kings that start out good, then they went off track. King David went off track. He went to the point of having Bathsheba's husband killed because of sin. He was a man after God's own heart, but he let his flesh control him instead of trusting in God. Solomon, the same way. He might have thought that he'd have learned but he let the flesh control. Power, power, power. Wives, contrabines, they're pagans. That was his downfall. Things happen. If we don't control the lust of the flesh, we also will fall into bondage. We as Christians can fall into bondage. Not that we lose our salvation. We fall into bondage and then we're not profitable for the kingdom of God. Amen. Our main verse reads, verse 33, Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires of you, and he will provide you with all these other things. So, as a Christian, you are to, in a direct way, aim your sights on the things of God and let Christ, through the Holy Spirit, reign in your heart. Include him in all your decision-making. Put him in his will first. Seek him only and let your seeking of him take precedence over all the things, present and future, in this world. See, God has created and called you for a specific purpose. And when you seek him, he will reveal his purpose to you. You believe that today? I know it's a fact. So my beloved, let me ask you this. Where are your priorities today? My beloved, don't worry about tomorrow. You may never see tomorrow. And tomorrow has enough worries of itself. So why incorporate tomorrow into today when you haven't even accomplished anything today? People are hurrying today. They're not enjoying today, worried about if their needs will be met tomorrow. Why not let tomorrow take care of itself? Be concerned about today. Trust God to meet your need. And trust God that he's going to take care of tomorrow. Because right now, you're in today. You're not in yesterday, and you're not in tomorrow. What can you do about yesterday? Nothing. What can you do about tomorrow? Nothing. But you can do something about today. That's it. Now, you can invest in tomorrow. Yes. If you put money in a bank, you can invest in, in, in your savings. You can invest in your retirement. Yes. But that's no guarantee you're going to live to receive it. So what do you do? You put an heir to it, right? You put an heir. You put an heir and a joint heir to it. Or if you die, who's going to get it, right? Who's your heir? That's what you do. Think about today. Who can you trust to take care of what you lay aside for tomorrow? You can narrow that list down real small. But just think about that. Let me bring up a few points in closing. Those who live heedlessly and giddy, absorbing each new fancy and pleasure that is past. Right now, what is it? Cell phones, tablets, computers, internet. You can't have a decent conversation without a phone ringing. Somebody checking messages. One guy, he's walking in the store. He's got a cell phone, almost walks over me. Now, I mean, if he was talking, I understand. But he's just looking. He's not even looking where he's gone. 
People walk out in the street with a cell phone, boom, they're in eternity. They're driving, boom, they're in eternity. They didn't see that train coming. They didn't see the car coming. They didn't see what they hit. They, they don't know. They're in eternity. That's all they know. There are those who are careless for tomorrow because they are careful for today. So don't worry about tomorrow. Take care of today. Do you have an opportunity to do good today? To invest in tomorrow? Do it. Remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. But when you have a mind to invest today for the future, do it. But don't worry about it. To the extent where you get sick, you think about retirement, or what are you going to do with this and that, and you drive yourself crazy. Take care of today. When you seek God for wisdom today, like through the Proverbs, he'll tell you how to invest for tomorrow and leave it there. When the 401ks first came out, I said, man, I don't know if I want to invest in this. I am going to see it tomorrow. But I said, okay, I'll do it. I started off short, like maybe 1%, 2%. And then I went to the max. The next thing you know, it's time to retire. Hey, I got retirement. <laughs> but I just didn't jump into it, and I wasn't worried about it. I know some people jumped into it. They put all this money plus extra, and then the economy went down, and boom, they lost thousands of dollars. I was always careful. I'd say, well, i got to make it right now. And a lot of people did that, and they lost their money in one day. But they saved up five or ten years, twenty years for it. Use wisdom. You can invest in your 401k today. Don't let it be the main thing that you concentrate on, because you may not ever get to draw. Think about how you can live today. Take care of your family today, because you might not be here tomorrow. But Jesus never said, don't invest in tomorrow. So don't stress all of your feelings on tomorrow, which is encountered to you. Follow me. Don't worry about to follow me. Let's work while it is still daylight. Because nighttime will come when no man can work. Follow me. And that's what we need to do. Follow Christ and do what we can for the kingdom. And God is going to meet our need. Know this, that the farmer must sow in autumn, that he may reap in the summer. So what does he do after the last crop? He turns it all over and it rots, right? Then in the spring, he plants. The summer, the fruit. Whatever he planted comes up. And that's what we have to do. We have to invest in the kingdom of God while it is still light. See, there's no need to, like a farmer, let's say a farmer, he plants and then the next day he goes out and is always checking. He stays up half the night to see when that first leaf is going to come up. It's going to come up. It's like with God, if you follow his plan, you're going to reap the harvest. Follow the word of God. Don't deviate from the word of God and watch God move. Don't worry about it. Don't be anxious for nothing. Because God knows what you need. Because all you're going to do is hurt your body, mind, and your spirit when you try to do it yourself. God knows what you need. If God has given life, will he not maintain it? Does he not care for the birds and the flowers? Sure he does. Did he not give his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you? Knowing this, you think he's going to withhold any good from you? No. So trust him and be at peace. We're going to close, and let me say this. If you have never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you to do so today. You must repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. He was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven as now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. If you want to trust him today as your Savior and Lord, and live today, because tomorrow isn't guaranteed you, live spiritually today, that should you leave this life, should this be your last day on earth, you will be with Christ in eternity. You will be in heaven. Because no church could save you. No minister could save you. No priest could save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. So if you want to do that, I want to lead you in a prayer. Remember, you must repent and believe. Please, repeat this prayer after me. See, it's not just saying a prayer. It's repenting, being sorry for your sins, and believing. Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, and it touched my heart. I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And I want to do that today because I know if I die today, because tomorrow isn't guaranteed to me, I would go to hell. And I don't want to go to hell. I'm sorry for my sinfulness. I'm sorry for the sins I have committed. I believe that only through Jesus Christ can I have eternal life and go to heaven when I die. Thank you for putting that in me today, for this message today that has given me the opportunity to repent. I believe that he was crucified, died, was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. 
is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. My beloved, if you believe this, and you really confess it from your heart, let me say this to you, that you have become a Christian. And should you die today, you will be in heaven for eternity. You will be with me, all the members of this church, every Christian that died already, that would die today, and would die tomorrow and in the future. We will all be together in the presence of God and the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ. Thank you for repenting today. And now just thank God. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I beloved, if you came to know Christ as your Savior and Lord today, please go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor. Tell him what happened. Ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website, www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com or just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, Texas. Thank you for being with us today. Our message has been prioritize your life and in parentheses, live for the most important things from the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Please let me hear from you by email at abundant.grace at att.net. God bless you. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Go with God.